Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at these two machines to determine which one is the best enclosed FDM 3D printer. Specifically we have the Elegoo Centauri Carbon and the Anycubic Cobra S1. Now for both of these machines they both have the variations. There's the Elegoo Centauri which is a stripped down normal version of this printer and of course the combo version of the Cobra S1 which is what I have here with the multi-filament system but we're not going to be talking about those just the Elegoo Centauri Carbon and the Anycubic Cobra S1 specifically. So without wasting any more time let's jump into the video. So both of these machines are considered beginner or budget 3D printers and they are relatively new on the market, both of these machines being less than a year old. And after putting a couple hundred hours on both of these machines, I can confidently say that both of these 3D printers are the best ones I've ever used. Neither one of these machines has ever failed on me unless it was something that I did wrong in the slicer or something to do with the filament, but never has the machine just randomly failed or had some sort of weird calibration or leveling issue. So if you just wanted to know if either of these are a good choice for an enclosed FDM 3D printer for beginners, yes, both of them are. Definitely some of the best 3D printers that I've ever used and super competitive with some of the higher priced Bamboo or Prusa enclosed 3D printers or even Creality's K1 series. Both of these machines can give you the same, if not better quality than the Bamboo's and Creality's and Prusa's for a fraction of the price. But there are a lot of key differences that both of these machines have that kind of make them go up or down in pros or cons depending on what it is that you're looking for and what it is that you're trying to print. So let's take a look at each of these printers individually. Okay, so first up, let's take a look at the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. Now this printer I got a little bit before the Anycubic Cobra S1, so I was able to do a couple of different prints and test out different materials on it compared to that one. And like I said before, I've had zero failed prints on either of these printers unless it was something that I did or one time I left a print on this machine, which caused it to fail, obviously, but never because of the printer itself, which is really incredible because I was expecting to get a couple of failed prints on either one of these, and I literally have gotten none. So let's talk about some of the design features. It has a glass door for the front of the machine, and the lid on top is also glass. And while that makes it feel like a very expensive and nice machine, there are a lot of issues. This is more with the shipping side of things, but there are issues with the glass shattering. And I'm sure if you closed it hard enough, it probably would shatter if you slammed it shut on this metal frame. But as long as you're able to take care of your machine and close the door properly, you won't have an issue with that at all. The user interface is a very nice touch screen, quick and easy to touch. It's not like one of those old school ones. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do whenever you get this printer is print off something to hold the lid up, allow ventilation in it, just so that way you can get ventilation whenever you're printing in PLA, you don't want it to be enclosed. I have the first model that was released to the public and the light on the camera is super poor, so I had to add some DIY lighting into it. So that is sort of a downside to this printer, but this was one of the earlier models and I think they've adjusted this already. So that is hardly even an issue anymore. Auto leveling, filament flow calibration, it has a full 30 minute self calibration test, remote printing with their own slicer, which is basically a port of Orca. The filament spool being on the side was sort of a unique choice. I'm kind of surprised I didn't put it on the back, but it's not a big deal. And the biggest plus side to this printer is that you're able to print with carbon infused PLA or any sort of material along the lines of metal or wood PLA or anything like that. It is able to print off those harder plastics. That way you can get stronger prints. Hence the name Centauri Carbon as the other one is just called the Centauri. This one allows you to print off those unique materials. And that is sort of the biggest plus side to this printer is the fact that you are able to print off stronger materials versus the Cobra S1. So yeah, that is some of the key features with the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Anycubic Cobra S1. Okay, so now let's take a look at its competitor, the Anycubic Cobra S1. Now the biggest advantage to this printer while we're not looking at it is the multi-filament unit, which if you want to print things off in multiple colors, this might be your obvious choice, but let's take a look at the other features that the Cobra S1 has to offer. So just like the Centauri Carbon, it has remote printing, auto leveling, all that kind of good stuff, but this printer cannot print off those materials like the carbon PLA or any sort of metal infused filament. The best feature that this printer has is the fact that Anacubic made an app for all of their printers. So you can remote print, pause, monitor, live stream, all that kind of good stuff on the app itself. And the lighting system that comes stock in the machine is a lot better than the Centauri Carbon version one. And while I don't have any huge prints from the Elegoo Centauri Carbon to kind of compare to what I did with this printer, I did print off a life-size Charmander using only the Anycubic Cobra S1 and it came out phenomenal. The layer lines are almost non-existent. I made sort of a simple profile with the 0.12 millimeter layer height. And while the build quality is on par with the Centauri Carbon, I do feel like the hard plastic door does make it feel a little bit cheaper. But on the other hand, it doesn't slam shut like the Centauri Carbon. It has a little bit of padding around where the door is supposed to hit. So whenever you close it, it doesn't slam shut, risking the 
chance of glass shattering. Same thing with the lid as well. So yeah, that is all the key features with the Indicubic Cobra S1. So we took a look at both machines by themselves and honestly, it's really hard for me to just say which one is better and which one I recommend over the other because both of these machines have given me such great quality 3D prints and also amazing ease of use that it's really hard for me to pick which one it is. But really what it comes down to at the end of the day is do you want to print more exotic materials and you want to be able to print things off in carbon fiber filament, or are you looking to get more of a lifestyle printer that you're able to use an app with to control and monitor your prints and also print in multiple colors. And at the time of filming this video, the Elegio Centauri Carbon has not gotten its multi-filament system yet, so just keep that in mind as well. Might have to make an update video whenever that one gets released and just compare the two after that. But that is all that I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below which 3D printer you think is the best and consider subscribing to my channel for more 3D printing content. And if you wanted to see the unboxing of either of these printers to see how hard or easy they are to set up, go ahead and just click on the printer and it will take you straight to that video. Once again, thank you guys for watching and I will see you all in the next video.